children, all of them. Lesson five, for safety's sake, travel in pairs. Better still, travel with your brothers and sisters and community leaders gathered here. We have got to turn back those who hijack Dr. King's work, words but subvert his call to end poverty and excessive militarism and excessive individualism that's killing our children. We must, particularly right now, make sure that we end those massive tax giveaways to the richest 2 percent when 15 and a half million children are languishing in poverty. Lesson six, almost done. Remember that the ark was built by amateurs. The Titanic was built by professionals. <laughs> Use your citizen power, your vote, to wrest our ship of state from that small group of experts and powerful and greedy corporate pirates who recklessly jeopardized all of our lives for personal gain. Feel your own power. Use your own power. Don't rely on experts. And last lesson, build your future, build our children's future and our nation's future on high ground. Let's leave our nation and world better than we found it, more just, more hopeful, more peaceful, more productive, more unified. This may be the first time when our children and grandchildren will be worse off than their parents and grandparents. Unless we correct course with urgency, with the power reflected in your witness today, to get them to safe harbor. Let me end with a brief prayer. God, we have pushed so many of our children into the tumultuous sea of life in small and leaky boats without survival gear and compass. Please forgive us and help our children to forgive us and help us now to build that transforming movement to give all of your children the anchors of faith and love, the rudder of hope, the sails of health and education, and the paddles of family and community to keep them safe and strong when life's sea gets worse. Thank you for your witness. Thank you, Mary. As the founder of the Children's Defense Fund, she is truly one of our greatest advocates for kids. And like so many fearless advocates, she got her start in the NAACP. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Benjamin Todd Jealous, President and CEO of the NAACP. And, behalf, and on behalf of our Chairman Rosalind Brock, our 36 state conferences, our 1,200 units, our board of directors and trustees, it is an honor to be here with you. My fellow Americans, before I get started, I'm going to ask you to take one more step with me. We've come too far to be turned back now. As Reverend Jackson says, the water's high, but you don't drown unless you stop kicking. And we've got to keep on kicking. Coming out of here, we've got to go home and ask our friends to vote. We've got to ask our neighbors to vote. We've got to get folks off the sidelines and get them back onto the battlefield. Tell them to get off the couch, get out the bleachers, turn out and vote. So right now, take out your cell phone, brothers and sisters. Take out your cell phone. And I want you to text V-O-T-E, text VOTE, to 62227. It's text vote to 62227. All right, and now I ask you, I ask you, brothers and sisters, to turn to the person sitting next to you, turn to the person on your left, turn to the person on your right, and say, You are my fellow, you are my fellow activist, you're my fellow American, you're my fellow labor leader, you're my fellow. 
Christian, you're my fellow Muslim, you're my fellow Jew, you're my fellow member of this country. Yes. Say, you're my fellow American and I love you. You're my fellow American and I will fight for your family like it's my own. One nation working together. American families' future like God, liberty, and country. Those three words are among the most powerful in our nation's collective vocabulary. As a child growing up in this country, I knew that my family, at its origin, was illegal. And yet very much like the great American family of which we are all a part. You see, on one side, we descended from white Puritans and more recent immigrants. On the other side, we descended from Native Americans and black slaves turned statesmen. Such unions in 1966, when my parents married, were illegal in every direction from 10 miles from where we stand right now. Growing up at the center of the dissonance between our country's promise of unity and its realities of so many fractious dualities force you to look for the common threads, the ties that bind us together, the factors that make our nation's motto, e pluribus unum, out of many one, less a promise broken and more a prophecy yet fulfilled. The strongest threads we have are those three words in this country, American, families, future. Whether we were born here or whether we sacrificed everything to be here, what makes us most American from the Gulf of Mexico to the green and white mountains of New England, from St. Mary's Church in Harlem to the fields and farms of Monterey County, is our commitment to persevere in the face of great odds, not just to secure our family's future, but that of our neighbors too. Because we know our national destiny is to move ever forward never backwards, ever forward, never backwards, ever forward, never backwards, ever forward, never backwards. As a great American family, when we hit times in which more and more of us live in daily fear of foreclosure, more and more of our teachers, our nurses, our firemen, and our police officers are getting laid off. And more and more of our students are coming home, not because they graduated, but because we are broke. Our faith in national progress is literally the essence of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. As American parents, this faith is forged in a tradition most dear to us, the one that has ensured for centuries that every generation will do better than the last. As an American people, what is greatest about our history are the many times we have led this world away from hate and towards hope. And so at this precipitous moment, in these times when both our gr great traditions, the one of generational advancement and the one of moving the world towards hope from hate, seem jointly at risk, we have come here to our nation's capital to say, let us nurture the practice of family values by policies that value families. Let us invest less and less in taxes for the richest 1% and war, and more and more in jobs and schools for the other 99%. A 
And by all means, let us not teach our children lies about our president's place of birth. Or that of any other American, any other person in this country. But rather, let us teach the truth about the universal dignity and values of all American families. And most importantly, as we stand here in the shadow of a monument to our nation's greatest uniter, in this moment when so much is at stake for our families and for our children, let us come together in the name of God, of liberty, and of country to ensure that jobs, justice, and education are and remain at the top of our nation's agenda. This is America. We are one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So it is written, so it must be. One nation, one nation, one nation, one nation, one nation. One nation.